OpenSSH version 10 has finally been released with some very important updates. The most interesting one being the switch to using post-quantum algorithms for secure key generation by default. So quick summary of the issue, the old algorithms like ECDH, which are still used for key exchange in the transport layer encryption of a lot of applications, is fairly resistant to attacks from classical computers. Even a supercomputer that could perform one quintillion operations per second against ECDH wouldn't even get close to cracking a 256-bit curve before the sun burns out. But with a quantum computer, each logical qubit that is added to the machine lets you run the algorithms to break ECDH quicker. And it's estimated that you would only need about three to 6,000 logical qubits in order to break it within a couple days. Now, quantum computers still aren't going to break ECDH anytime soon because the only way to even get any useful information from those logical qubits is to include many more physical qubits to do some quantum error correction. In fact, you would need about 13 million qubits in total to correct all of the errors that you would get with that many logical qubits. The more logical qubits you try to pack into a single system, the more physical ones you need to fix it. So it's a problem that grows. And so far, companies like IBM have only even gotten barely over a thousand physical qubits into their quantum computers. But this new ML Chem algorithm is currently deemed safe against the possible attacks that could be carried out by those future beefy quantum computers that are running things like Shor's algorithm at a rate fast enough to decrypt secrets before their significance expires. And by doing this upgrade now, the OpenSSH team is trying to get in front of the issues that are going to eventually come in the future when powerful quantum computers do exist, but it is important to note that this upgrade to your system can be applied now to mitigate the threats of things like store now, decrypt later. Because even though it's safe to say that quantum computers aren't going to threaten encryption tomorrow or this year or even the next year, it's much harder to extend that projection decades into the future. I mean, nobody knows what's going to happen a long time from now. So ultimately, it boils down to how long you actually think your digital secrets are going to be relevant for, and if you need to mitigate threats from an adversary that actually has the resources to store lots and lots of encrypted information now and decrypt it later, like what the US government is doing right now and has been doing for years. Another algorithm change that is being made with OpenSSH is support for DSA is now completely dropped. This is an even older and even less secure algorithm than ECDH. DSA doesn't use elliptic curves for its key exchange, and it's more vulnerable to things like logjam attacks, especially with smaller key sizes. And it was actually disabled as a default option in OpenSSH, at least as far back as version seven. So if you've still been using it, you've been going out of your way to enable it. Uh, and this should go without saying, but if you do have remote systems that are still using those older key types, you really should replace those keys with more modern ones so that you can continue connecting to them with OpenSSH 10 and not have to go through the steps you have been to enable legacy keys, which I don't even think is possible for DSA anymore now that support has been completely dropped. And there's a few more kind of subtle but still important changes that have been made to OpenSSH. So they decided to split the user authentication phase of the SSH protocol from the per connection SSHD session binary into a new SSHD auth binary. If we take a look at the commit message from October 2024 when sshdauth.c was first added to the OpenSSH repo, it says split per connection SSHD session binary. This splits the user authentication code from the SSHD session binary into a separate SSHD auth binary. This will be executed by SSHD session to complete the user authentication phase of the protocol only. Splitting this code into a separate binary ensures that the crucial 
pre-authentication attack surface has an entirely disjointed address space from the code used for the rest of the connection. It also yields a small runtime memory saving as the authentication code will be unloaded after the authentication phase completes. So that memory space separation minimizes the risk that vulnerabilities in the authentication process are gonna be able to compromise the entire SSH session. And this is also more in line with the principle of least privilege, breaking the SSH process into separate components and only giving each one access to what it actually needs to function. So boom, OpenSSH has better memory safety now and they didn't even have to rewrite the program in Rust. OpenSSH 10.0 also addresses a logic error that has existed in the program since version 7.4, regarding the disable forwarding option for X11. So previously, when you would set disable forwarding to yes in the SSHD config file to disable X11 forwarding, uh, that would still remain enabled, which ultimately weakens the security posture of your SSH connection. Now, if you aren't familiar with this X11 forwarding, it's a feature in the SSH protocol that enables a user to run graphical applications on a remote server, and then you're able to interact with them on your local display. And of course you use your local mouse and keyboard, your IO devices to interact with the graphical program you're seeing. And this feature isn't explicitly insecure, but it's obviously still exposing resources unnecessarily if you're just going to interact with a remote machine through the command line like most people do. It's not that common to manage remote machines through a GUI, through X11 forwarding or any other means, because there's always going to be some kind of input output delay with a remote machine. Even when using SSH through a command line, you've probably noticed some delay in executing commands and getting the results compared to doing everything just locally on your local machine, and that's gonna be exaggerated slightly more with a graphical window. But all in all, this is a really great update. There are some potentially breaking changes, like the drop support for DSA and the SSH auth function being split into a separate file could also screw some things up, and there's also some name changes with the versionings and things. So. Make sure to back up your system and definitely do some testing before you deploy this upgrade. And then you're gonna be able to rest easier at night knowing that your remote servers are quantum safe. If you enjoyed this video, please like and share it to hack the algorithm and check out my online store, based.win, where you can buy my awesome merch and accessories for your phone or laptop. 10% store-wide discount when you pay with Monero XMR at checkout. Have a great rest of your day.